from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. Indianapolis, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire, and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Good, He's doing something to earth. Season. This is yes. a good time to be alive in the kingdom, kingdom. of God. Yes, it is. I know it is because we have got a brother with us today. We've got a pastor oh, from my. Gary, Indiana, who is doing a phenomenal job in a place where, where God is working mightily. And I, I got to let you, I got to let him share his story. Yes. But right now, I want us to receive Pastor Sion Roberts, Robert. Sr. of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church of Gary, Indiana. God bless you, God bless man you. of God. Good to have you today. Thank you. So glad that you made it. You. Uh, I know you kind of got a little turned around on the road, yes. but won't he turn it around oh, for you? He, he turned he it did. around. Yes, he did. He brought me here just in time. Come on, I sung you up in here, all right? And you finally made it. Yes. Amen. And yes. I'm so glad you did because I've just been kind of reading up a little, a little bit on you. A lot of times, um, can, can we just be real? Yeah. You know, uh, from, from Indianapolis perspective, uh, we, we used to say, oh, man, they from Gary. They from Gary, it's Indiana. Rough. Oh, God, I don't know if I can deal. But you know what? The, the, the statistics <laughs> is happening in Indianapolis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's almost worse than it has been in <laughs> Gary. Uh, but you know what? God is doing something. Yes. And God plants us where he wants, to, yes. wants us to be planted for a divine purpose. And from what I've been reading up on you, brother, uh, God is, has uh, positioned you yes. st strategically right in Gary, Indiana for, for a great purpose. I see it all on you anyway. Amen. Amen. But we just welcome you here. I'm excited to hear about your story. Thank you. Um, you how, how long have you been pastoring in Gary? I just made eight years uh, eight. this past November. Well, November of 2013. Amen. So wow. Eight years. Uh, started pastoring when I was 25 years old. My and God. the Lord has brought us eight years. So. Eight Amen. years, yes. and, and, and how many kids later? <laughs> right. Four. Four, all yes. right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Happily married to one wife, praise yes. God, and four kids later. Uh, we're excited about your ministry. And, and I got to say this, because uh, one of the things that stuck out to me uh, is when I was watching your video mm -hmm. and you were sharing uh, about the ministry, mm -hmm. and, and you do something in Gary yes. that's just near and dear to my heart, the yes. peace rallies. Yes as you're going through the streets, and I saw y'all walking through the streets of Gary, yes. uh, uh, you know, as, as the symbols of peace for the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. And you know, that touched me because of what we do here in, in Indianapolis since 2006 with the drive-by prayer vigils, yes. and yes. God's called us to the streets of Indianapolis. Wow. You've got to tell me uh, what, what has been happening with those peace rallies. It's been awesome. Um, one of the things that, that I, I've tried to teach the people in our church is, you can have awesome, great church in the walls of the church, come on, come on. but until it spills over into yes. the streets, you know, you're not really doing kingdom work. So we have had people that have come together and we honor uh, not only the families of those that have, have had lost loved ones, but we also, we try to take preventative mes measures. Mm. We're praying. Mm. Um, yes. Before we went up and down, our first peace march we had, we went to every neighborhood 
and we prayed and we made, we made sure we saturated the, the area. And we didn't just focus on street violence, we focused on domestic abuse. Come on. We focused on, you know, violence in the home, violence, uh, just all, anything we could think of that would have to do with something that is violent and negative. Mm -hmm. We tried to focus and we taught classes on that and then we rallied after we marched. Just a lot of things that we've been trying to do. We've got the police department behind us. Good. Uh, they, they, they march along with us and they make sure we're safe. And, and, and more than anything, we believe in what's, what's going on spiritually. So while we're making a statement, we believe that when we're praying, something's happening in the atmosphere. Watch yeah, out, watch out. Absolutely. And we believe that God is really doing some things. And, and we've seen some differences. Of course, it's not just us. There are other people in the city that are doing their part. But mm -hmm. we, that's very serious to us. Very God. Serious. So you are seeing a change begin oh, yes. to take place in the city. Yes, yes. That's yes. good. Uh, you're a man out to my own heart. <laughs> you know, to the church uh, beyond the walls. Yes. 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 Isn't that what Jesus called oh, us to? absolutely. You know, we just come into the walls for the uh, for the pep session yes. and that you get built get up and instructed and so yeah. we can go out and do the work because that's where Jesus did most of the work right Absolutely. every now and then we see he's been in the synagogue and he's yeah. reading scripture he's here but most of the time yes he Jesus is hanging in the streets absolutely, absolutely. amen with those that are undesirable watch yeah. out yeah come on <laughs> okay you get ready two preachers together yeah, Lord you have mercy you get ready to tap into something <laughs> I'm gonna have to leave it alone because I can go there <laughs> yes. that's good um, You've you've written some books. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. In fact, uh, the first book was uh, "Panting After His Presence," and that Ooh. was an autobiography that talked about how I got from uh, my childhood and all the things that I've gone through up until um, I started to pastor. So really, there's an eight-year sequel okay. that could be written, but mm -hmm. but that was the book that just kind of chronicled everything that I've gone through. Uh, the, the the things that I've gone through were just equivalent to somebody who was probably twice my age and I didn't realize it but God was getting me ready for a quick work mm. and uh, so that that book tells it all it doesn't talk about the people who did things to me just it talks about what I did too, the mistakes that I made come on uh, I tell the whole story about mm -hmm. you know just just the struggles that I went through mm -hmm. and then the book Teen Rocks is is that Jesus says uh, Upon this rock will I build my church. He tells Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we teach that the church was built on revelation of who Jesus Christ Come is. On. Okay. So we've gone through the scriptures, taken all these metaphors and given the revelation behind them. Um, so is, it, is this designed more for teens? It was, it was teens? done with teens in mind. Okay. Uh, because teenagers need things to be able to study the word of God. Uh, but it's kind of like that, that, that deodorant commercial is it's strong enough. <laughs> Uh, for any adult, <laughs> right, 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 it, it right. was created for That's teens. <laughs> it was definitely created. That's for teens. good. Yeah, good stuff. And and what's this one? Family time. Well, when that author thing hit me, it, it got generational, and my son started doing, seeing what I was doing. And he okay. said, "Well, Daddy, I want to write a book." And we told him to write it, and we'll take it and 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 try to make it look as professional as possible. Wow. So he he took the time to write it, and uh, it was his chronicles of what he thought about the time that he spends with his family. Oh, Out of all of my children, he's the most family he loves family you know his, his mom dad brothers mean a whole lot to him so so and how old is he he's nine was he in nine years old when they he was seven when he when seven he when that. he put this together yes. oh yeah. that's awesome he, this is going to go down i love he that he will never ever <laughs> yes. forget yes what you did yes. to allow him to put his first book out yes. at seven years old. Yes. Wow. At seven years old. Incredible. When he turned 17 and 70, <laughs> he going to remember daddy. Yes. You know, daddy and mama helped Cute. me put this together. What yes. a blessing that it is. That is powerful. You know, and, and I already see you a family man. I mean, you believe believe in the family. Yeah, and, and what uh, what God has, has put together and orchestrated, that's the foundation for us to make it. That's a good thing. Yes. That's a real good thing. That's good, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's what, well, first of all, <laughs> children is, is my passion, so yes. that, that's already touched me. And, um, but there's a, um, I think there's something you're passionate about and um, a topic that I want you to, uh, to give us a little more information on uh, brokenness, everybody must be broken. Yes. And uh, t tell, us, tell us about that. Well, you know, I believe that Jesus puts p certain people in the earth for certain reasons. And while the, the Word of God is what all of us must use to minister, I think certain people have certain assignments. Okay. I found out that my assignment, one of my assignments is to deal with uh, the suffering that we must go through. And mm -hmm. I've, I've gone through a lot of it. 
And it was at the point where I realized that all of us have to go through periods of brokenness in order for God to even use us. Oh, wow. Um, we just rented out the theater Wednesday night, and our church went to go see the Son of God. Oh, and and he was talking about, yeah, he was yeah. talking about uh, his body being broken for us and, and his, his blood being shed for us. And Paul says that I may know him in the fellowship of his suffering mm -hmm. and the power wow. of his resurrection. And so the fact that everybody has to go through those seasons of brokenness is very near and dear to me because it is in those seasons that God uses to elevate us, those seasons of suffering that he pulls the best out of us, mm -hmm. uh, where he allows us to go through things in our flesh that we may not understand, but it ends up uh, producing something that is spiritual that, that ends up blessing the world. There's a lot of revelation that God has given me on those topics. Oh, wow. that, that, that's, a, that's a, such a key topic because I think we were having a, a discussion recently about, um, we were talking about discipleship and not, um, and giving people the truth that mm -hmm. because they because they accept Jesus as Lord and, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit that their lives are always going to just be this wonderful, yes. uh, this expression of everything's wonderful, everything's great. Mm -hmm. And when suffering comes and when brokenness comes, it's like, oh, yes. wait a minute, they didn't tell me I was going to have this situation or this was going to go. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, it's such a balance yes. there uh, yes. for you to help people understand you're going to be broken. There's yes. going to be moments of suffering. Yes. Uh, what does that mean to you personally? For me, it's, it's, I had to understand what it, because as a young boy, God, I was, God had to reveal to me and people had to teach me that I was highly anointed. But God had to show me that it's the suffering that's causing this anointing to wow. be on your life. And it's kept me forever grateful and humble because I realized that the anointing came with pain. Mm. And, and so wow. even when you're talking about the, the, the olives that the anointing comes from, yeah. um, when you study that olive, the thing, not only do they crush it, but they call that, that portion in there, they call it flesh. Mm -hmm. It's called flesh, the actual olive okay. itself. Mm -hmm. So when that flesh is crushed and that oil oozes out of that olive, it, is, it denotes exactly what Jesus wants to do in our come lives. On. Wow. In fact, he said, you talked about that discipleship, he said, if any man's going to come after me, he must first deny himself. He must take up his cross and he must follow me. And so the anointing does not come without a cost. I tell people all the time, yeah, yeah. salvation is free, come on. but the anointing costs. Cost. <laughs> if you want to be anointed, you're going to have to go through something. My and God. my life is, my picture should be next to <laughs> what it means to suffer for that. Wow. And, and I just, you know, I want people to understand that when God's breaking you, sometimes it feels like he's your enemy. <laughs> You know, but he told Jeremiah, mm -hmm. he says, I know the thoughts that I think yeah. towards Come you. On. Yes. Thoughts of peace and not Come evil on. to bring you to an accept, expected end. Mm -hmm. He's just telling All us, right. you know, as we're going through and as he's allowing us to go through, he's just letting us know, listen, I've got an end that I'm taking Come you on. to. Come on. You know, I'm Alpha and there I'm Omega. Hope. Yeah, Come I'm on. beginning and the end. And I say to people all the time that because he's Alpha and Omega, you know, he doesn't work like us. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to do everything from beginning to end. Well, he goes to the end first. Watch out. He works out the end Come and on. then he comes back and he walks us through to the end. So we've already been finished already before we begin. Mm -hmm. huh? Already been finished. You've been watch out, Pastor. <laughs> now, now look, most of the time when you, you, know, you say words like this and even to the secular world, yes. you know, Christians, you know, we got the Christianese and they yes. say, oh yeah, I know about brokenness. And yes. as soon as you say it, man, they can go on their knees and just start crying, yeah. weeping. Yeah. But the world, yes. you say you got to be broken. That's mm -hmm. the negative connotation to that. So they're like, uh, mm -hmm. okay, I am already broken. <laughs> and you so you want to break right? me again? Right, okay. Right. So it, it help us understand uh, because in their mind is think, okay, if I'm broken, do I ever get fixed? Or is that the way he always wants to just see me in that condition? How would you explain that? Well, we, we, as, yep. as, yeah. as, go ahead. No, go ahead. As it relates to Jesus, um, you know, the Bible says the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. And everything Jesus does, he has a purpose, purpose. and he has a plan behind it. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking about being broken, you're talking about the fact that he's breaking you for a purpose. Come on. And so when, when he takes you through that season of brokenness, uh, Jesus is the only one that can use you and not use you up. Mm -hmm. And so he'll put back everything and he tells Israel, I will restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust stole from you. That he says, I will rebuke the devourer. So everything that God does, he has the ability to feel. He has the ability to heal. He has the yeah. ability to, to undo 
the brokenness of your past mm -hmm. and he has the ability and so and what we got to understand is that Jesus will allow us to go through some things but he's not necessarily the cause come on of everything come on so a lot of my brokenness um, <laughs> it was my mistakes mm -hmm. but for well, we know that all things work together my for God. the good of them who, who love God and who are the call and so what I teach our people at New Hope is the devil really can't do anything to you he can only do it for you Wow because when you love God and you're the call according to his purpose everything that happens in your life whether you make the mistake, whether God does it, or whether the enemy has done it, mm -hmm. God has a, an awesome, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent way of making all of that work together for your good. So that's that Romans 8:28 yes. that falls into place, yes. and we know that all things, yes, all things, all things are working together yes. for your good. So for believers, it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know, you, you you have you have some people that um, that stay in a state of brokenness. How how do they? How do they keep from sliding from brokenness into depression? Because you can see that some people are broken, but they've moved over into another level of depression. And how to, uh, just how to balance that and, and, and how to keep from doing that, falling from brokenness. Because I think we remain in a state of brokenness mm -hmm. all the time, but how to, how to remain there and not slip into depression or, or self-pity and, you know, all that's, of that. That's a great point. I mean. We should remain in a state of brokenness. You know, uh, David said, with a broken spirit and a contrite heart, have I come before you. So I think that we've got to understand that the people who have slipped from brokenness into bitterness, I believe, are people who only have really are missing one component, and that is a real relationship with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. where he can reveal to you why, why you're going through why? what you're going through. The why. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people all the time, we're really no better than those who have slipped into bitterness. It's just that we have an understanding about Jesus that maybe they don't have. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need to seek to do on a regular basis, is to show people. That is my ministry, literally. We were just having a leadership meeting last night, and I was telling people about vision. You have to understand what your purpose is, otherwise you're going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. New Hope Baptist Church, our job is to is to give new hope to those who have been broken, mm -hmm. to help them understand this is why you've been through what you've been through. So that while we, we target all crowds and everybody's welcome to come, I understand the bulk of who's in my ministry. Yeah, that's and good. those are people who, have, who are trying to get a restart in life and say, mm -hmm. I've been through some hellacious situations. <laughs> I, I need to be somewhere where I can be built back up. So that's literally the, that's the crux of our ministry. Well, in fact, I, I was following some of your, through your website, some of the different ministries that mm -hmm. you have that obviously relate to the whole brokenness piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you had like a, a food, you feed the, the hungry. Every Just Monday. Share, share some of those practical things you have. Every today. Monday when I first got there, the Lord uh, placed it on my heart. You know, I, I, I'm born and raised in Gary and people make fun of me all the time. They talk about how I can go anywhere, overseas, Jamaica, Bahamas. When I reach back the city limits of Gary, a smile comes on my face. Mm -hmm. as, as, as dilapidated as the city may be, the heart was to, to reach out to the people of Gary. Mm -hmm. So every Monday, we, we feed, and we don't have government dollars doing that. That comes from church money. Okay. We, we fund that, and we have the people come in, and we feed them hot meal. Um, um, and a lot of them have come to the church, but like I tell the people, you know, we, we, that's not the reason we're doing it. If they want to come, that's good. We mm -hmm. want to provide them with something that will give them, meet a need. Every Christmas, um, there is a huge dinner on Christmas Eve, and we give away coats, hats, scarves, gloves. Mm -hmm. I mean, just things of that nature uh, mm -hmm. that we try to do in the community to try to make sure that we're reaching out. I'm very, very uh, strong about not just having church yeah. on Sundays and Wednesdays. Come on. We cannot do that. I That's not it. pleasing to God. Yes, sir. The, the great commission is go. He tells go. us to go, go. more come emphatically than he tells them to come. Go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, we, I love it. I've been doing a series in our midweek study mm -hmm. on making disciples. Yes. And just really trying to impress upon our people. Mm -hmm. Y'all, you know, it's beyond these walls. It is. It uh, is. The great commission, one of the final words Jesus left us with is what you just said, go and make disciples. Make disciples. Yeah, yeah. But you can't stay <laughs> yes. and think you're going to do the same thing. No. And when we get out outside these walls and understand I'm not waiting to Sunday morning That's right. till the preacher tells me something good, That's right. make me feel good That's so I can right. go back and, and endure my next week. That's, right. that's not discipleship. That's, right. know, that's not making disciples. That's right. And what I'm hearing it, that's happening at New Hope in your ministry mm -hmm. is that's what you're doing. Yes. You're, you're reproducing yes. disciples, yes. In, which is the mandate that God has called us to. Absolutely. That's a good thing. Absolutely. That's a good thing and I'm excited about that. You excited about that too? Uh, absolutely. Uh, that's the message. <laughs> 
<laughs> I believe that's the message. Yes. Th that's it. God has a plan, and I believe that he's strategically raising up yes. uh, just uh, new gatekeepers yes. in this season. Yes. Uh, I think I'm kind of teetering, tottering, you know, in the newness, getting ready to phase <laughs> over into the, the the other. But I, you know, I haven't given up on that other side yet. But you. but I'm just watching God yes. as He raises up these new gatekeepers that has an expression of the very heart of God and yeah. what God's calling for. Everybody ain't going to the dogs. There you go. You know what I mean? You would think, you, you know, this is the last day. Nobody's trying to do it. No, there's yeah. some folks that still God have their, their yeah. heart and mind focused on God and the things of God, and they're determined that this going to happen. Yeah. And, and I believe that in these last days, it's going to be that great movement, that kind of that great revival, that great yeah. awakening yes. that's stirred up. And, and I, I'm feeling something. Oh, oh my, my God, <laughs> my God, something just happened. There's a remnant. Yes. There's a remnant oh my goodness, that I was God is raising up. Word. And it's not a label of a denomination or anything else. It's just men and women of God that Who he's called and said, you're the one yes. that I'm going to use. Yes. They may not understand you, but I'm going to use you. Absolutely. And if you keep listening to me, I'm about to show up and show out. I'm do you're speaking directly to me because when I got to New Hope, well, I've been a lifelong member there. My grandfather pastored there for 35 years. Mm -hmm. There was an interim okay. pastor. He died when I was 14. There was an interim pastor there for 10 years. When I, when I became the pastor of the church, it was traditional Baptist. Mm. And nothing wrong with that, but the Holy Ghost Come on. wasn't strong there like it needed to be. Come on. And okay. so God, God used me to really introduce them to what, what the Holy Spirit was all about and, and let them know, you know, a lot of times Baptist churches, we stop at the cross. Come he on. died and he got Come up. On. Well, 50 days later, something happened. Watch out. You know, and, and the Holy <laughs> Ghost, the Holy Spirit has to be ever present. And that's what's been happening. He's moving. Oh, that's the Holy awesome. Spirit is moving beyond denominational walls. Yes. And he said to Elijah the same thing you just said. When Elijah was feeling sorry for himself, like I was feeling sorry for myself in that work, he said, I still have 7,500 that have not kissed Baal. Come on. You're not by yourself, Elijah. Come on, come said, on. get up, go anoint get Jehu. Up. Go anoint Hazel, go anoint Elijah. Come on. You got some yeah. help in this thing. Yeah. And God has sent me some help, I thank God, from, from my pastor good. and my bishop and everybody who's been a blessing Lord. to me. Amen. Now, brother, That's we awesome. can hang, okay? Because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling you about <laughs> yes, now, all right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. God is doing something, y'all. I hope y'all listening to this. I hope y'all getting this. Don't get locked in yes. to so church what, as usual. Yeah. That's the message. Yes. Don't get locked in to church as usual. You're going to miss it. <laughs> There's going to be a big wind come through, and you're going to wonder what in the world happened. Yes. But you better catch a hold of yeah, what God is yeah, doing right yeah. now. Yes. Come on. He ain't, he ain't labeling it, stuff yeah. and categorizing stuff right now. He's just looking in fact, for you know, I think, I think um, intentionally mm -hmm. he's, he's placing people in, yes. in places to just to almost to confound the wise. Absolutely. Because yeah. they think they got this all set. There this is the way go. it's going to look. And he said, you know what? I'm going to put some over here. I'm going to put some over here. I'm going to put some folks in the Catholic Church. I'm going to put some over here. And guess what? And we're not going to be able to figure it out because go. he's God. He's God. And I'm so glad he's God. All by and himself. we're us. Okay? <laughs> and he's sovereign. And he'll do whatever he want to do. That's right. Man, Man, That's I could right. go on and on with you because I'm feeling you right now. Yes. And I'm thanking God for the work that you're doing in Gary, Gary. Indiana. Yes. yes. And God, I feel this. Father, I pray for Thank new you, hope. Jesus. Yes, yes Father. Lord. Uh, Thank Hallelujah, you, Jesus. Glory Jesus. to God. Yes. Lord, I pray for Pastor Sion, God, and Thank what you. you're doing. Lord, I sense a great oh, revival God. in the city of Gary, Indiana. Oh, That's Jesus. about to break out. God and spread my God to the uttermost parts. Thank you. God. So Lord, I pray that you would use him. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. God. Continue to oh, use him. Father. Like only you know how to do. Oh God, yes. we thank you. Oh God, yes. and just yes. magnify yes. your name, Lord, God. Lord, Lord, I thank you that you are raising up a man, God, yes. that is only listening to you, oh, God, God, and your direction of what you're speaking. Yes, and because of his obedience, God. Ah, the waves of revival are going to flow, and we thank you for it now. We thank you for those that you're bringing alongside yes. him. Oh, God, the workers, oh, God, the servants, oh, God, Lord, that you're bringing alongside him to use him for your glory. Yes, we give God. you praise for it now. You, and, Lord, Jesus. as I pray for, you, for Pastor Sion, I pray, God, for every, every other minister, every other man and woman of God that yes, you're raising God. up in these last yes. days, that they know that I am called for such a time as yes, this, yes. and I've got to be obedient to carry out what God thank has you, called Jesus. me. It's yes, a mandate that is on my life. Oh, God, and I think there's an explosion that's yes. about to happen in the Hallelujah. earth. God, and you have 
you've already selected and you've Hallelujah, already chosen Jesus. and preordained those, oh God, that will be a part of it, thank this you, great God. wave that is about to happen. Thank and you, And we Lord give Jesus. you praise for it. Thank you for Hallelujah. the man of God. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you for the spirit thank of God in him. Thank you for the work of the thank ministry you journey, that you oh placed in him, yes, God. Lord. Lord, oh God, we give you praise. Jesus. We give you praise for it. Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. mighty name. Jesus name. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. My brother, our time is up, yeah. and you messed me up, okay? I just want you to know you've just messed me up in here because it's always good to know, when, to know the ones that God has pre-selected yes. for such a time as this, and yes. we pray God's blessing. Did you, did you enjoy him? Wasn't he a blessing? Oh, a Hallelujah. tremendous blessing. Just a tremendous blessing I know him. this is the start of something really great. Yeah. Amen. 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 You can call it prayer line, 317-535-5800. They're still waiting, amen, to get... Uh, uh, your call so they can be in prayer with you. God bless you, my God pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.